the Joe Rogan experience. How much difference is it perspective wise when you're when you're in space and you're looking down on the earth? Like that has got to be the ultimate mindfuck. It's amazing. So that this is what I'm trying to do in life, like a couple books I've written, some films I've done. Um seeing the earth i remember early in my first flight it was like okay i'm in outer space and my there's my planet over there you know it was this profound thought that wow i'm not on the planet anymore and over uh, over seven months in space it never got old like it was always like man earth is beautiful it is this incredible planet um and so there's so we could talk for hours about this but i think for me the biggest perspective change was um I'm less of a black and white person now. Like before I went into space, I knew right and wrong. And a lot of, when you're young, you kind of, you're black and white. As you get older, you get wiser. And seeing More the planet, grays. seeing the planet, it's like, yeah, the, this thing's been around for a long time and it's going to be around for a long time. So you probably don't need to get as uptight about, you know, the day-to-day -day stress of life. And um, it's, uh, it just kind of put things in perspective. Like don't get, too excited about the Kardashians or whatever <laughs> the latest political tweet was or whatever. Yeah. Um, like, you know, things are going to go on for a long time. And so that it helps put that in perspective in a big way. It's interesting that it, uh, an actual physical perspective change, just being just l being in a different place where you're looking down on it from a different vantage point. Yeah. All the astronauts seem to say that, yeah. that it has this profound shift and how you think of Earth, and how you think of humanity in general. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things, I've been traveling since I was a kid. I did some exchange uh, programs in Finland and France, and in the Air Force, I lived all around the world. And whenever I would go to France or Korea or wherever, it was like, all right, I'm in Korea. And then I get back to the States, I'm like, all right, I'm ba back home in America or whatever. And now when I travel, and I've been traveling a lot the last couple of years, I don't ever, I always feel like I'm home. Like, it was weird. Oh, wow. one, one time I landed in the Middle East and I remember thinking, I'm, it, I didn't think anything. And that really struck me because that used to always be such a big deal wherever I landed. I kind of feel like I'm home no matter where I'm at, which is wow. interesting. And yeah. that's from the space travel. I, I, it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it, I, it wasn't conscious. I didn't like expect it or whatever. I just realized that, hey, I don't ever, I don't ever feel like I'm not at home. And my, my crewmate, Samantha, said something really profound. She said, um... Like you see earth and you can tell it's going around the sun. Like you can actually see the motion sometimes if you're watching stars and stuff. And it's like, we're on the spaceship together. So we ought to be crewmates and not just passengers. Yeah. Like we all ought to kind of take care of the planet and ourselves, each other and stuff. Do you find that most of the, or many of the astronauts sh share this similar perspective shift that once you go up, you do realize the, how weird it is that yeah. th there are these tribal differences between us. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what the hell are we doing? I, I got a story about that. But to be honest, we're probably not the best um, communicators of emotion. You know, like, you know, we're not necessarily all touchy feely people, but some of my close friends that we talk about this, there's a very, there's a very similar perspective of, you know, we're all here on the, on the planet together. I was on my first flight on the shuttle and it was the fifth. I remember it was the, the fifth night there. And when I looked out, we were going over the Mediterranean at night and you could see there's this like U shape where there's Egypt and the Nile, there's Israel and Syria and Lebanon are right there. And there's Turkey and Greece. And it's just little area. And Israel is this little thing that's surrounded by Jordan and Lebanon. You know, they're all like right there. And I remember thinking like, guys, what's the problem, man? You're, you're, you're literally living together on a postage stamp on this big planet. Yeah. And it wasn't anything about Israel or the Middle East specifically. It was more like. Why, why can we not get along? Because we're all down here. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, if you ask most people, their their position is they'll, they'll never be peace in the Middle East. So. <laughs> Which is crazy. One of the things, after my flight, so I, we would, they'd send us to Congress and we talked to congressmen and senators. And I got to talk at the White House a couple years ago at the National Space Council. And my message to them is always the same. It's always, you know, to, for a space program, it's not about the rocket science. It's about the political science. Like we got to figure out politics to get things working well. And whenever I go to the American Congress, they're always like, you're right. It's exactly right. If it wasn't for those other fuckers on the other <laughs> side, we could get this right. Republicans and Democrats all said that they all totally agreed with me. And it was always the other guy's fault. There's a, there's a, there's definitely a problem that is going to be tough to overcome. How much benefit <laughs> would there be in getting those people in space? 
Yeah, you know, people talk about that. If only that leaders could go into space and I think for some of them it would make an impact and some of them they wouldn't care. It's I mean, there's just sick. they're well, the goal of politics and power is just to keep yourself in power and get yeah. more stuff for yourself and, you know, throughout human history. It's not normally, you know, altruistic democracies that the way we run ourselves. Um, so which that we need to move in that direction because that's the way life gets better. But um, I think some it would benefit and some it wouldn't. Well, the thing is, like, no one really wants the job that is <laughs> balanced and healthy and intelligent right. and has a, a good perspective for perspective for humanity. Yeah. The people that want the job, they want to be the king poobah. They mean want to be the ego. big dog. Yeah. yeah. It's just a weird kind of person that wants that job in the first place. It's uh, people are like, why don't you run for office and. And I always say, well, do you have a, give me a fork. Do you have a fork? Cause I want to stick that in my, cause that would be more fun than, you know, <laughs> you try and do something nice and you're just getting nonstop hate mail. And anyway, yeah, yeah and it's a rough girlfriends from high school start <laughs> testifying before Congress. This thing that happened 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's fascinating to me how many of the astronauts do have this incredibly profound experience again, just from the physical act of being above earth and looking down on it where this perspective shift just kind of changes your your overall thoughts about being in space being yeah. being a, a part of humanity on this organic spaceship in, in the universe rather than being like locked down in chicago right there's clouds above you so they don't even think about space you know, dude, stuck in traffic on yeah. your way to work every day, same grind. Every you get stuck in this narrow minded perspective. Almost every astronaut who discusses this says that it was a profound, life changing moment to look at Earth from above. Yeah, it was. And you know, I can like close my eyes. if I'm in one of those like shitty situations, you just close your eyes and it's like right now the sun is rising somewhere. That's the most beautiful thing. You can't imagine it. You know, I try I took a lot of pictures, I did movies. But unless you see it with your eyes, you know, you can't imagine how awesome it is. So that takes the edge off the traffic you're having to wait on. And um, it does help. But the the thing is, like, taking that experience and sharing it with as many people as possible. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.